Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a two-part series where I'll present one paper of the same topic today and then for next week I will present another paper on the same topic. Today I'm going to talk about numerical RTA and the first paper that was written relating to numerical RTA and how to improve linear flow parameter and original oil in place estimations compared to the classical flow regime analysis. I know I said a lot, but I'll break it down when I go forward with the presentation. Please be sure to like this video, subscribe so you can get more content in oil and gas and professional development topics, and please be sure to comment on the video below so I can incorporate your feedback into future videos. Please make sure to hit that notification bell when you subscribe because I upload every Friday and every Sunday. Every Friday is a professional development topic and every Sunday is a technical review. Well, let's continue with the content. Hey everyone, as I mentioned, I'll be going over the numerically enhanced RTA workflow, which improves the estimation of both linear flow parameters and hydrocarbons in place. This was written by two engineers from Apache and by IHS or one engineer from Apache and from IHS. The objectives of the study, there are two common goals in RTA. It's quantification of early time well performance using linear flow parameter and the original oil in place. And these are essential for understanding completions, geology, and depletion, which then advises different strategies for optimizing economics of future development. The paper outlines limitations in traditional RTA and proposes an improved workflow to better obtain values for a linear flow parameter and original oil in place. A background for the study, RTA equations and diagnostic plots do not take into account the changes in compressibility, viscosity, or formation volume factor. In fact, compressibility can increase by over 10 times at the bubble point due to the free gas phase, invalidating the key assumption in classical flow regime analysis. Pressure and perm corrections, which are described more in detail in the paper, they have to be addressed. However, the problem has been identified in the past. There's been some recent attempts to overcome this, such as the work by Clark, Chris Clarkson in 2019. The approach was to integrate across three regions of reservoir saturations to enable the calculation of different function for pseudo time and pseudo pressure. It's an improvement but numerical models still handle the changes in saturation and compressibility better than analytical models. This is due to each grid block having its own pressure and saturation. The goals for the improved workflow accounts for the changes in compressibility and pressures above and below the bubble point, accounts for changes in saturation and associated diagnostic value from changes in producing gas, oil, and water ratios, accounts for changes in flowing pressure without distortions of being introduced from a path dependencies of how wells have been drawn down. You can have an accurate, precise, and repeatable determination of linear flow parameter as an indicator of initial well performance. You can have an accurate, precise, and repeatable determination of the end of transient linear flow and associated drainage volume, allowing for optimization of well spacing and reserve recovery direct input into higher level analysis like numerical simulations, and you have a short time of the analysis. Listen closely for this proposed workflow. You first forecast a single fracture using a numerical model with the actual drawdown of the well being analyzed. You have no outside flow, single perm, high dimensionalist frac conductivity, large reservoir length. You take the actual wells production for each day and compare to the transient single frac model. The ratio actual to model will be equivalent to how many infinite acting single fracs are present. Then you calculate the linear flow parameter of the single frac model. Multiply this by the daily ratio from step two to determine the instantaneous linear flow parameter. You plot this instantaneous LFP as a function of time a flat line indicates transient flow, a deviation represents boundary dominated flow. The magnitude of this flat line indicates the linear flow parameter. Repeat step one, but with smaller reservoir volumes. This will increase the ratio of the linear flow parameter to the OIP ratio and shorten the corresponding time to end of transient linear flow. 
plot the ratio of each L of P to OOIP's case rate to the rate of the infinite acting case. These will be the L of P to OOIP stems that fall away from the single infinite acting case. Then you match the observed actual production rate to the nearest OIP stem. And here are some of the results where, as I mentioned before, a straight horizontal line represents the transient linear flow phase. And then you have the actual well performance in the green representing a decline in the boundary dominated flow. You have the instantaneous linear flow parameter that begins to decline, which is the end of transient linear flow. And then if you look at the plots on the right, you'll notice the sensitivities between the same linear flow parameter but different original oil in place and how it makes a difference in your oil rate. In that, or how it makes a difference in your oil rates. For instance, when you have a different original oil in place or if you have less original oil in place, your decline will be steeper gas oil ratio would be higher. So wells with higher linear flow to OIP ratio will end in transient low sooner, which causes a faster decrease in oil rate and an increase in GOR compared to the low LFP to OIP. Wells with the same LFP to OIP ratio will have the same GOR profile for the entire life of the well, regardless of the actual value of the LFP or the OIP. So here are some results in some of the pressure history or in some of the GOR and his, other history matching that you can have with this analysis. So the smaller OIP case, which is the one on the very left, it matches initially, but as oil rate begins to drop sooner and GOR rises sooner, both signatures indicate boundary dominated flow, which means that the LFP to OIP needs to be a little bit, uh, it needs to be different. It needs to be higher, or it needs to be lower, excuse me. In the larger OIP case, so which is the lower ratio, the well stays in transient flow for longer and has a resulting higher larger late time oil rate and lower GOR associated with transient flow. The GOR still rises in the OIP case, which is why the infinite acting case is needed to see how much of a rise in GOR is simply from the reduction in the flow and pressure of the actual well? Now the paper goes into more detail in the blind test. There were 10 engineers that were used to do the classical linear flow or flow regime analysis and then the new workflow. The new workflow shows a less than 10% difference in the results compared to the classical flow regime analysis in which results were all over the place. Now I'll talk about some of the conclusions of the study. Compressibility can increase by over 10 times at the bubble point due to the free gas phase, invalidating a key assumption in classical flow regime analysis. Dramatic change in compressibility at the bubble point badly distorts the square root of time plots even under ideal condition. If a well is drawn below bubble point, it is then impossible to pick the end of transient linear flow using traditional methods due to changing compressibility. Changes in flowing pressure distort the square root of time plots even under ideal conditions. Interpreting LFP and OIP from the square root of time plots can have errors introduced simply from changing flowing pressure. Linear flow parameter must be adjusted from square root of time plots before inputting into a multi-phase model. This adjustment can be as large as quadrupling the perm Wells with the same LFP will have the same early time performance and wells with the same LFP and OIP will flow the same for the entirety of the history of the well. Wells with the higher LFP OIP ratio will end in transient linear flow sooner, which causes a faster decrease in oil rate and an increase in GOR compared to the low LFP to OIP. Wells with the same LFP to OIP ratio will have the same GOR profile for the entire life of the well regardless of the actual value of the LFP or the OIP. And then by using the actual wells flowing pressure for the single frac model, this workflow accurately accounts for the changes in compressibility, flowing pressure changes, and shut-in periods. So thanks so much for taking the time to listen to this presentation. As usual, please be sure to subscribe, like this video, and comment below so I can incorporate your feedback into future videos. 
please be sure to hit that notification bell when you do subscribe because I upload every Friday and every Sunday. I know this was a brief presentation, but I wanted to introduce you to the workflow. And then next week, I'll talk about the extension of the workflow and the automation of the workflow and how you can have more accurate linear flow parameters and original oil in place. Thanks so much for taking the time to listen to this presentation. I'll see you in the next one.